Paul Moe. Well, good morning. What? What? Woo! I am in a barrel. Hello? 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 Always, always a privilege and an honor to get to stand and share God's word. I, I can't think of a more higher honor in earth than, um, than to be able to do that, than to share God's life-giving word to people. Amen? Um, when Pastor was talking about Halloween Takeover, I can honestly say that when we did this, when, what, two years ago, three, two years ago, it is, it was one of the funnest outreaches that we ever, ever did. It, it was so fun, and uh, it was very, um, it was very apparent that God was there, that his love was there, that his peace was there. You know, when, when love is in you, when peace is in you, when joy and hope is in you, you don't necessarily have to always tell somebody that. They're drawn to you. They're drawn to that on the inside of you. One of the things that we did for Halloween Takeover was we had popcorn two years ago. And when we started talking about doing that, it was kind of like, you know, popcorn smells so good and we're going to fill the air with popcorn and so people will follow that smell, you know, uh, to get to the house. But, you know, we weren't even thinking that it would be that big of a hit or anything. But when people came to the houses, you guys, they didn't want to leave. People were standing in line for popcorn, children and adults. I mean, we couldn't make the popcorn fast enough. And they just stood and, and they just waited. And I believe that was an absolute product of uh, being drawn to light, being drawn to hope. Amen? So I encourage you, be excited about this and, and get involved in it. You're, you will absolutely love it. Yep, you'll be changed. You'll be changed. Um, so today I'm going to talk about uh, Psalms 91. Yes. Amen. How many of you can raise your hands and say that that's your favorite passage in the whole Bible? Oh, just two, three, four, five. Okay. <laughs> it is. It's a lot of scripture. And I'm going to be real honest, you guys. I wish I could tell you that I was funny and that I told stories, but mm, not so much. Uh, the only... <laughs> The only way that I know uh, to share God's word is we're going to look at a lot of scripture. Yes. Are y'all good with that? The, uh, the Bible tells us that the entrance of God's word brings light. Amen? And I would say from the time that I knew that the Lord had, had called me to, well, it was a very clear, it was a very clear uh, calling, and it was during years ago when we had what we called a pray through breakthrough week. How many of y'all familiar with that kind of terminology? You just pray through till you get there, you know? Anyway, so we were seeking the Lord about different things as a church coming in morning, noon, and night, and, and we were praying, and I heard the Lord's voice at that time. Wasn't seeking him about this, but he said that you would be sharing, you would be teaching, and you would be preaching the Word of God. And it indeed did come to pass. I'm very blessed to be able to teach in our Bible school. Yep. Amen. And I will say, I'm much more accustomed to having like an hour and 15 minutes rather than, oh, some of y'all thought it was funny. There was a whole lot of faces that weren't humored by that whatsoever. Mm. But every time that I ever have the opportunity to share God's word. There's, there's a basic foundation and there's a basic thing that always, that I always build from, the platform that I build from, and it is that God is good. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Every day in every way, and, and one said it this morning, God is only good. 
God is only good. And I believe one of the biggest lies that Satan has infiltrated into Christian people is the, the line of thinking that everything happens in their life is from God and part of God's will. And let me tell you, that is not true. Amen. That is not true, and we need to know this because if we do not know this, I mean, listen, listen, you guys. John 10.10, 10, someone tell me what that says. That's right. The thief comes but to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus came, he said, to give us life and life more abundantly. Is that right? John 10.10, 10. amen. Is that what it says? So, and then in 1 John, it says, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. That means there's no darkness, there's no evil that can come out of him. If I were the devil, and I am not, if I were the devil, what a perfect setup for God's people. To feed them a lie that everything that comes into their lives is from God. Because if that's true, and if that's the line of thinking that we embrace and that we live our lives by, all we are doing is opening ourselves up for the destroyer to come and kill, steal, and destroy and there won't be anything on the inside of us that rises up the way James tells us to submit to God, resist the devil, and what happens? He will flee. Well, if we are not recognizing evil and destruction and death is at the hand of Satan, then there's nothing on the inside of us that's going to come up with this fighting spirit of faith and says, oh, no. Oh, no, you don't. There's nothing on the inside of us that pushes back and resists what the enemy is trying to bring into our lives. So is it important that we understand that God is good and only good? And that we have an enemy in this earth and it is our job and it's our responsibility and it's our position to resist him for our lives for our family's lives, for the community that he has set us in, and for what he is trying to do in the earth. Amen? So, that is the foundation from which I always, always teach God's word. It was life-changing for me. It was life-changing for me. How many of you can say the same thing? Amen. Amen. So... We're going to go to Psalms 91, and we're just going to go through this verse by verse. Amen. Let's, let's pray before we um, get into the, to the word this morning. Father, we love you this morning. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you that it is light and life to us. We thank you that the Holy Ghost is the great teacher. And we are asking you, Lord, for eyes that see and for ears that hear your truth and your word, Lord. And that we have hearts that are, that are ready and receptive, Lord. That we receive the anointed word of God that has the power to save our souls. And so we thank you, Lord. We thank you for light. We thank you for deliverance. Lord, I'm asking you for utterance, for anointing on your word, Lord, that only those things that are in your heart, Lord, that it be ministered and brought forth this morning. And I thank you, Lord, that today, that today freedom comes that today freedom and liberty from bondages and from fear comes in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. And we give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen. Amen. So 2 Timothy 3.1, I didn't give you guys this verse, and that's fine. You can keep that up there. But 2 Timothy 3.1 says, This know and understand that in the last days... Perilous times shall come. 
Can we say amen to that? Are we living in perilous times? And is there a way for us to be in this world, but not of this world? Is there a way for us to live in a secret place, as Psalms 91.1 says, and be fully protected and safe, us, our children, our grandchildren, all the days of our lives here on earth? Amen, there is. That's what the Word of God tells us. And if you're not convinced of that quite yet, I promise you that the Word of God is alive and powerful, and it will quicken you on the inside. The faith of God, the Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Amen? And faith will begin to rise up on the inside of us, and that we will see the greatness of who our God is for us. Amen. Amen. One thing I I so love and appreciate about the Word of God and about the good news. Did y'all know that the gospel is good news? The gospel is good news. And if we attend to the Word of God, it promises us victory in every area of our lives. Amen. This should be such good news. Y'all should so be smiling this morning. And the reason that we can't smile sometimes is because we don't know or really believe that. That it is possible for us to live our lives as an overcomer and as a victor in every situation of our lives. Amen. That is the good news of the gospel. God's not mad at you. He's for you. He's not against you. You can live in safety. You can live free from fear. Hallelujah. So I teach a little bit and I preach a little bit. Is that okay? Amen. All right. Psalms 91.1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power, how many foes? No foe can withstand. Glory to God. Say, that's my God. Amen. The word dwells in the Hebrews simply means, we know this, to remain and to abide. So in this scripture, in this passage of scripture, we are going to see all kinds of promises that God is making us and telling us who he is to us. But we're also going to see that there are conditions that these promises aren't automatic in our lives. Just because we say we are a Christian does not mean that we're dwelling and abiding in the life giver. Dwelling and abiding means there is, there's relationship, there is, there's life coming in and out of, of us to him and out of him to us. Amen? That's what dwelling and abiding means. Okay. So in chapter 1 there, I want you to underline in your Bible, and let me tell you, I really encourage you to write in your Bible. Look, write it up. There are things when spoken uh, that you hear in sermons that the Holy Spirit ministers to you. What is that? That's an alive word. That's revelation word. That is a word that God has spoken just to your heart. Write it down, underline it, make notes in your Bible. Amen? And if we're going to, sorry, if we're going to be doing that, that means we're going to be putting a high priority on the Word of God in our lives. That we're not going to have to wonder where our Bible is at home, right? And really, this, this, isn't, this isn't a downer sort of thing, but the life that I just talked about that God, through Jesus Christ, came to give us, <clears throat> we're not going to live in that place. We're not going to live the life of an overcomer. We're not going to see victory in every area of our lives if this is not priority to us. If this isn't priority to us. 
That's weak. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Verse 1 says, It um, shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty. This word right here and the priority that we put on this word and abiding. How do we abide in him? How do we abide in God? In his word. This is how God's, God and his word are one. Amen? You know, and I, I've said this many times before, that this Bible, the, the words in, in this book, it's not just a self-help thing. The words are alive. They're alive and active and powerful to do exactly what it says it will do. Amen. I've got to move on or we are not going to get through. All right. So shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty. The only hope for stability in our lives is when we are anchored in the Word of God. That's our only hope. That's our only hope. So I want you to underline in, in your Bible there, Most High and Almighty. What does Most High mean? There's no one higher, is there? If He's the Most High, there's no one higher. Almighty... If he is the Almighty, is there anything more powerful than him? Anything? No. All right. Uh, let's turn to Ephesians 1. And I may have to start cruising a little faster. Because we do have 16 verses and we're still on one. Amen. Amen. So, in Ephesians 1, it gives us a picture of our position. It gives us a picture of who Jesus is. And in us seeing who Jesus is, is the only way that we are going to see and know who we are. People are looking and searching all over the world for answers. Who am I? Who am I? Why am I here? Everything that has to do with you and who you are is knowing him. He, how, how many syllables can I get in that? Is knowing him and who he is. Amen? All right. So Ephesians 1 and 17 says, For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. This is a great prayer to pray for yourself and for your family, for your church, for leaders, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him, by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints. And so, verse 19, that you can know and understand. God wants you to know and understand some things. What is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe? As demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead, seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above, say far above, Far above all rule, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named. And then you'll go down and uh, finish out in, verse, in chapter 1 and into verse 2. And it talks about our conditions when we were in the world, before we knew the Lord, that we were in darkness. The only, we were dead. We were dead in our sin. And the only way we knew how to live was out of that deadness and according to sin. Okay, that's what those first couple of verses in chapter 2 talk about. Then it says, verse 4, chapter 2, But God, one of my most favorite verses in the Bible, But God, so rich is he in his mercy because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in our own sins, our own trespasses, <clears throat> trespasses he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ he gave us the very life of Christ himself can you pause and just think about that for a moment he gave you the same life that he gave Jesus when he raised Jesus from the dead the very same life Romans 8 says that um 
Roman, Romans 8, 2. Let me go there real fast. <clears throat> For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Isn't that good news? I pray this over uh, my family and over you guys, over the church uh, on a regular basis. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus rules and governs every aspect of our lives. We're no longer in the realm of darkness. We're no longer in the realm of where the curse is. We're no longer in the realm of where, where fear is. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. And the laws that govern our lives are the law of the spirit of life. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's good news. Verse 6 says, And he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together in the heavenly sphere. So if you are born again this morning, your position is seated in Christ Jesus. On the right hand of the Father, far above all principalities and powers. Amen. This is your position. And so, this is my position. And so when we read Psalms 91, we're not reading from a place of, of coward down and, and just begging and hoping that God will somehow protect us from the evil one. We are seated in Christ. Far above all the gunk and the monk of this world. Amen? All right. Let's go to chapter 2. Excuse me. Verse 2. No chapter. Verse 2. says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. On him I lean and rely, and in him I confident, confidently trust. So those first few words in chapter 2, this is a big one. I will say of the Lord. Remember that I said there are conditions for us to, um, um, to receive these promises of being hidden in him. And, and one of these, God has a job to do and we have a job to do. Come on, say, I have a job to do. We're not sitting around and expecting God to do everything for us because when that happens, the enemy, it sure will come in and take us out. We have something to do. And what we have to do is what the Bible instructs us to do. His part is grace. Everything that he gives mankind, he does it by his goodness, by his grace, because he's good, not because we're good. Amen? But everything that grace makes available, faith takes. Your part is faith. My part is faith. Amen. Amen. I will say of the Lord, what we say in our lives matters. Who we say that God is to us in our lives matters. There is a passage in uh, Matthew, we're actually not going to go there, but Matthew 16, 13 through 17, you can put it up if you would like. But Jesus is talking to his disciples here, and he, and he asked the question, who do people say that the Son of Man am? Who are people saying that I am? And they answered him, and they said, some say that you're Elijah, some say you're John the Baptist, some say that you're a prophet, and then he stopped and he asked them this question. But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, you know, the famous line, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And so I will just submit to you this morning that everything that has to do with your life, everything is summed up in this question, who do you say that Jesus is? Who do you say that he is to you? We know the scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But who do you say that he is? We, in order for us to inherit eternal life, we have to call him Savior. Amen and Lord. 
in order for us to receive healing in our bodies, we have to call him healer. Not just healer in general that God can heal if he wants to. The scripture says, I will say of the Lord, he's my healer. Amen? This is huge, you guys. This is huge. Who do you say that Jesus is? Now, to go along with that, we have to be very sure where we're getting our information. Who and what are we letting define who God is? Um, do you know firsthand, and when I say firsthand, because you've spent time with him, because you've heard his voice, because you've let this word tell you who God is, or are you living on secondhand revelation from mom, from dad, from grandma? I'm, I'm not knocking mom, dads, and grandmas, you understand. But secondhand revelation does not produce the life of God on the inside of us. It's got to be firsthand revelation, you know? And how many of you would raise your hand and, and be honest and say that there are probably some lines of thinking, some patterns of thinking that you have established in your life about God, who he is and how he works that didn't come from right here? Okay, come on, people. Every single one of us should have our hand raised because this is true. Every single one of us have thinking patterns that didn't come from the Word of God. And if we let other people, other people, if we let circumstances in our lives or circumstances in other people's lives tell us who God is and how God works, that is another lie of the enemy that sets us up for absolute defeat. And how many of you know, we are, you know, we, we're called to be light in this world. We're not called to go dig a hole somewhere and just, and just feed on the word and, and, just, and just stay there. No, we're, we're out. We're out in the world. Amen? And we come in contact with all kinds of all kinds of um, philosophies, all kinds of ideas. We see all kinds of things. Our job is to go back to this right here. Our job is to go back to this right here and let God tell us who he is and how he works. So we live our lives, we live our lives based on what and who God says he is to us. And if I find in his word that I can live protected under his wings all the days of my life, that I don't have to live in fear, that I don't have to be fearful of, of disease and, and catastrophe coming into my life, then that's what I'm going to believe. If I'm the only one standing, I'm going with God. If I'm the only one that's going to say, I believe God more than I believe any circumstance that I'm looking at, then that's what I'm going to do. I've done made up my mind. Why is that? Because God is good. He's been good to me. He is faithful and true. And he has, he has shown me over and over and over and over and over in my life that he is a man, he cannot lie. If he gives me his word, it's coming to pass. Amen. Bear with me. I'm going to see where to go here since, wow. See, if we stay a little longer, the restaurants will be cleared out. <laughs> um. 
The other thing that I want to say about this is um, when you hear anyone teach the word, whether any, anybody on TV from this pulpit, and Pastor will tell you this as well, don't just take it hook, line, and sinker. You have a responsibility. You cannot leave the house of God and say, well, Pastor said, well, Pastor said, well, Pastor said. You have to know God said. So everything that is, everything that you ever hear, you go back and you say, Lord, okay, you're looking at your notes and this is what, this is what I heard in church today. Lord, you show me. You show me in your word. You understand? When we do that, when we take responsibility um, for, for hearing the word and what goes on in our lives, then you know what? When the Lord shows us something, we can't be talked out of it because it's not just pastor said or Mona said or someone else said. It's God said. God said. God showed me. God said. Amen? Okay. So, you know, as far as our thinking, what do we do since we all decided that we all have patterns of thinking set up in our lives that, that some didn't come from the Word of God? So the Bible tells us in Romans 12 and 2, very familiar scripture, but we're supposed to do something. We're supposed to do something with our thinking. We're supposed to do something with... with um, yeah, with how, how, how we think. And it says, Do not be conformed to this world or this age, fashioned after and adapted to his external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind. The NLT reads like this, Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. <laughs> then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Amen. So we don't have to live our lives with stinking thinking. We can get into the word of God and learn to think God thoughts and God's ways. Amen. Amen. But we have a part to play. It's not going to fall on you like an apple out of a tree. And you're not going to get everything that you need to live a successful, victorious life if the only word that is going in you is from Sunday morning. Amen. Isaiah 48 says, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. The word of God are the thoughts of God. And if the Bible tells me that everything that we see is going to pass away, but that this word right here will live forever, then this is what we should be basing our life on. Something that will never, ever pass away. Amen. Um. The, the second part there, or the last part in chapter 2, it says, And in him I will conf confidently trust. There is power when you put those words in your mouth, when you say it out loud. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you. There, there, is, there is something extremely powerful about that coming out of our mouths. Proverbs 6, 2, we're talking about what we say, okay? Proverbs, well, sorry, Proverbs 18, 21, let's see that real fast. Oh, y'all are good up there. It says, a man's moral self shall be filled with the fruit of his mouth and with the consequences of his words. He must be satisfied. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they which indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it. Are we reading the Bible? What does it say? Death and life are what? Does it matter what comes out of your mouth? If we believe the Bible, then we're going to say it matters what comes out of our mouth. 
And whether death or life, it, the Bible says that we must be satisfied by the consequences of one or the other. So I would say it matters what we say. The Passion Translation 1821 uh, says, Your words are so weighty that they have power to bring life or release death. And I know that there are, this is another one of those things that Christians can tend to have a snooty attitude about, about the, the words of my mouth that doesn't really matter. If we believe God, it does. And the truth is, whether you believe it or not, you're walking in the fruit of your own words right now in every area of our lives. Amen. Proverbs 6, 2 says, You are snared by the words of your mouth. Isn't that something? <clears throat> Later on in, in Psalms 91, uh, it talks about um, that he delivers us from the snare of the fowler, the trapper. He delivers us from that. But Proverbs 6, 2 says that we ourselves set snares for ourselves by the words of our mouth. We're snared, we're caught up, we're trapped because the own words that we have been speaking about ourselves, about God, about our family, about our finances, about our healing, about our country, our nation, our government, we're snared by the words of our mouth. If we believe that death and life are in the power of the tongue, we are going to be talking accordingly. Amen. So I would say this morning, Lord, help us. Help me to see and to receive this word in my life because quite frankly, I'm tired of walking in the crud I'm walking in. See, God's bringing answers. God's bringing answers this morning. God's bringing answers to some of the stuff that we're dealing with. And if we receive it by faith and act on it, it completely turns our life and our situation around. Amen. Verse 3. Well, let me say this about snared by the words of your mouth. There are traps that Satan lays for us in the forms of thoughts. He's trying to get us to take his thoughts and say them out of our mouth. Do y'all see that? His thoughts of destruction, his, th his thoughts of despair. He's trying, that's what he's trying to get us to do, all right? And we know in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, what does it tell us to do with thoughts? Take every thought captive that does not line up to the Word of God and make it come in line. So we're responsible. We're responsible for the thoughts that we think. Don't say that you can't help it. Yes, you can help it. And it's a lie from the enemy to say, oh, I can't help but just think about this. I can't help but worry. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Quit saying that you can't help it. Okay? You can help it. All right. It's time to close. I'm not even close. Verse 3 says, For then he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Snare of the fowler, traps. Satan's always laying traps for us to snare us, to get us caught, to get us bound. What are some snares? What are some traps? Selfish thoughts. Would that be a trap? Friendly, caring man at the workplace for married women. Is that a trap? A pretty lady with flattering words to a married man. Is that a trap? Pornography site that just happens to pop up on our screen. Is that a trap? Offenses. Is that a trap? Huge snare. He works overtime to, uh, to set these traps for us in our lives. Yet the scripture just tells us if we are hidden in Christ and we are saying that God is our refuge, God is our high tower, God is our strength, then God delivers us from these snares when we're trusting in Him and relying on Him. What does that mean? That means because we are abiding in Him, 
we're abiding in his word and he's abiding in us, then when these things pop their ugly heads up uh, in our lives, these traps, then God comes in and does for us what our flesh weak, flesh weak, uh, weak flesh uh, can't by itself do for us. Why is that? Because he's bringing light the Word is bringing light to us. The Word is bringing light to us. And that light empowers us in those situations to choose life. To choose life. But if, if we haven't been abiding in that Word, if we haven't been abiding in Him, dwelling in Him, and that light coming into us, then when these traps that the enemy sets for us to bring destruction in our lives, we have nothing to combat it. Amen. Deadly pestilence. What is this? It's deadly disease. Deadly disease. I love how Psalms 91, uh, it, it just covers every aspect of our lives. God delivers us from deadly disease. Galatians 3.13 tells us that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. The curses of the law are listed in Deuteronomy 28. I encourage you to go home and read that. Read what the curses in that chapter are. And Galatians 3.13 says you've been redeemed from them. If you are a child of God, you've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Sickness and disease, plagues, pestilence, uh, disease of long continuance is all listed under the curse. And if Christ has redeemed us from the curse... If Christ has redeemed us from the curse, amen, then our right as a covenant person is to be free from that curse. Amen. It lists many sicknesses, diseases, destruction, lack, poverty. And then in verse 61 of Deuteronomy 28, it says, And every sickness and every affliction which hasn't been mentioned in the chapter. So he said, just in case that I didn't list some sort of disease, calamity, plague, pestilence in here to let you know that you're redeemed from it. I'm adding this one clause in uh, verse 61 that says, even if it hasn't been mentioned in this chapter, you're redeemed from it. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. God says we're redeemed from the curse. So what do you say? I'm redeemed. The word says, let the, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We need to be saying so. Instead of laying down and being pitiful and al allowing the enemy to just run roughshod over us with anything he wants to bring in our lives. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. I'm redeemed. Amen. Verse 4. Then he will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings shall you trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor of the arrow, the evil plots, and the slanders of the wicked that flies by day. I'm good then. Let me turn it over to you. Okay, so, so, oh, I'll tell you what. If that didn't get you started getting lit up a little bit, here's the deal. We have to know who we are. We have to know what we've been given. We have to. And she was teaching, and I, this is what the Word of God says. Right here, this is what the Word of God says. This is what the Word of God says. Here's what she just, all she said this morning is, this is what the Word of God says. This is what the Word of God says. This is what the Word of God says. Now it's up to you to say, what are you going to say? And she, she, how many times you say, what do you say? Does it matter what you say? Does it matter what you say? Absolutely, it matters what you say. And we're going to pick up this. We were going to do three weeks of covenant, but this is covenant talk. And we are going to be talking about covenant next week and for the next three weeks. But this is covenant talk. We might just do like, I don't know, like the Bible says in, in Proverbs, how there's, in, in the words of uh, multiple people, there's, there's wisdom. And we might just do like, a, like get on a chair and start talking the word of God, but finish, finish up Psalms 91. But here's, I want you to hear this before we, as we close. About Satanism. This has so rocked my world. Um, 
it just changed it changed everything. Excuse me while I take a pen cap out of my mouth. Y'all are going to laugh, right? That is terrible, right? But I had it in my mouth when I got up. All right. I, 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 one of those bad habits from when I was a kid. It wasn't, I didn't have gum, so I had a pen cap. All right. So <clears throat> here's Satanism. All right. Listen. I, hey, being real, right? All right. So Satanism. This is what Satanism is. This is their doctrine. It's not killing women and children. It's not seances. It's not massive everything evil you can imagine. This is what I found about Satanism. I don't know how the Lord led me to this, not to the site, but just like looking this up, right? Led me to a Satanism site. And as you click on the site, there's pentagrams and there's de demonic things and just, you know, it's all just so demonic. But here, this right here, this right here is their doctrine. You ready for it? Our position is to be self-centered, with ourselves being the most important person. person. Our, this is our doctrine. Our position is to be self-centered with ourselves being the most important person. Self-love, feeling, and lust. Or it doesn't call it sexual, whatever, uh, gratification. That's their position. Whatever, in essence, is what is, is, in essence, what do you think? This is the strategy of Satan. The Bible says in the last days that the men will become lovers of self. Why, why is that purpose? Because by you saying not what God says, but what do you think? You literally put yourself under his rule. This is how Satan's getting, working, getting things put into place, left and right, left and right, left and right. And you can either get in, put in place by what you say, or you can say, what God says. It's not what do you think. That's Satanism. In essence, what do you think? It doesn't matter what I think. You know what? If, if the Word of God says something different than how I think, like maybe I just want to wring somebody's neck, right? And, I, I'm, and I, they really deserve to be cut. And they deserve this. And the Lord shows me, and I see, and I remember, to whom much is, you know, like he per forgiven much, I should be forgiving. Remember that parable of that guy? He, he's like, oh, I'm going to, and he gets forgiven a great, great, great thing. And all of a sudden, he goes back and, and finds this guy that owes him like 10 bucks and has him thrown in prison. And he was forgiven of an unpayable debt. And then the master says, whoa, 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 whoa. Go get that guy and throw him in until he can pay back. And that means he, can, he knows he never could pay back. And take his wife and his children. Because he said something different than what God said. When the light of God's word comes, it's our obligation, if we're going to serve the Lord, to say what he says. End of discussion. And that's what, that's what this Psalms 91 is about. I will say of the Lord, he who dwells, and this is what we're talking about, dwelling in him, being in Christ. This is what she was talking about. This is where you sit. If you've believed on Jesus and you said, no, I call him Lord, I call him Savior, you dwell in the secret place. And so now you're seeing what he says about you. And we got to start saying what he says instead of what we see, instead of what we think, instead of what somebody else says. Because like she said, secondhand revelation will never produce any kind of transformation in our lives until you get it yourself, until you say, no, this is what God says, then you'll never be able to say it. You can't say what you, don't, you haven't heard him say. And so this is why it's so important as the church to be, to, to, for us to walk free like, and, and walk free of fear and walk in victory. We have to know what he says. Because far too often we are literally given the enemy or Satan a foothold or giving him authority in our lives because we're saying what we see and what we think instead of what God said. Amen. I'm healed. Somebody needs to say, I'm healed. I, that's what I am. I am healed. I need to take the note. You need to go, like she said, go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and see all these things you've been redeemed from. Well, guess what? I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. So that's what I'm going to go. I'm coming to the doctor. I, okay, what, do I need to take any steps? But this is what I know. This is, what I'm, this is what I say. I say what God says. I don't say what the doctor says. I say what God says. I'm telling you guys. We are, we, how, it's creative. We are created. We are created to create with our words, just like God was. He says, or is. He said, in his image, he created us. The creator. We are the creative being. And that's how what we create. And what we create, and this is what we were just talking about camp, we create whatever is in here with, our, with the words of our mouth. 
We don't realize how powerful thoughts are. And she was talking about just, just she just read Romans chapter 12. Be not, tra- be not conformed by outside pressure. And this is why it's so important to be putting this, not only this in, but coming, in, coming to hear the word. Because every day, outside pressures are trying to conform you. That's what it means to conform. But transformed, it means from the inside out. And this is what the Bible says, that the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to divide even the joint and the marrow from the inside out. This is why we have to have this be put in us. Because we're not only to be transformed in our mind, we're to transform our surroundings. The Bible says, be a light of the world, a city set on a hill. Do not hide that. Instead, light it for all to see. Everywhere you and I go, just like we were talking about, uh, she was talking about on uh, Halloween Takeover, you, people knew God was there. And people, sh- everywhere you go, Satan should know that you're there. And you know what? Here's the deal. Well, I don't want Satan to know that I'm there. You know, you know you do. Absolutely you do. Because he, can't, he has no authority over you because of the blood of Jesus. So you need, we, we need to stop getting scared of, what the, of the devil and this and that. No, no, no. No, we take authority over you, Satan, in the name of Jesus, and you have no right. And this is covenant talk. And here's the deal. We got to understand what Christ has done. And we got to understand what God says about us. Amen. And in a covenant, we're going to be talking about this in the next few weeks. But in a covenant, there's an exchange. There's an exchange of promises. There's an exchange. And he says some things to you, and you say some things to him. And guess what? He says some amazing things to us. Amazing things that we're not aware of. And because we're not aware of whether the ticket's been paid or not, it is, we're not using them. And we got to start using them. Amen? Let's stand. Thank you, Lord. Aren't you thankful for the just, uh, I'll tell you what, if you ever just want to seriously be blessed, have a, just have a God talk. I love having God talks with this, just with anybody. But anyway, Father, we love you so much. We thank you for your word this morning. Lord, we thank you that we have freedom to just follow you in this church and just be led by your spirit. Lord, we thank you for the word that was spoken this morning, that it, that it bears, that it, uh, it plant, it's planted deep within our hearts. And Lord, we thank you that it produces peace and joy. And Lord, I thank you for more and more understanding as we go today. Holy Spirit, bring back to our remembrance the things that in, in the moments that you spoke to our hearts. Bring back those things to our remembrance and expound on them. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.